So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today for this exchange on special issues and guest editorship. Um, it's been, I would say, one of the top three main topics of discussions in the publishing world over the last year or so, I think just behind generative AI and paper mills. Uh, we're really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the subject today. My name is uh, Marie Soulier. I am Senior Publishing Manager at the Open Access Publisher Frontiers, and I've been on the co-council for a few years now. I was the main writer of the lately published discussion document from COPE on the best practices for guest edited collections. And that's why I'll be hosting the discussion today. Um, and we have some of our colleagues, Sarah and Natalie, who will be helping to moderate the chat and work with the microphones as well. I'll first give you a short introduction on the discussion document itself. And then I'll share a few questions that are up for exchanges for us to start the discussion. When we get to this part, um, as Anna mentioned, you'll be able to contribute in the Q&A, and I will read some of the comments from there, but especially I would encourage you at that point to use the function to raise your hand, and I'll be able to call your name and we'll unmute you from our end so we can hear your contribution. So this really isn't intended to be a monologue. We're here to hear your opinions and experiences and ideas around this particular topic. So here's the link that Anna already showed as well to the best practices document, if you haven't seen it already. Um, it was edited and reviewed by 15 or so COPE council members, as well as the trustee board. We released this as a discussion document to, that we use to introduce recommendations and ethical principles for this particular complex issue and others. The, the aim of these discussion documents are really to stimulate discussion and debate around a particular topic that we think is a timely one to address. Um, and this is why we're here today to then discuss following the release of this document. And I'll give you now just a, a short summary of the document itself. I guess first, I want to clarify what the term guest edited collection uh, encompasses for us. It's, you know, includes all the special issues, research topics, hot topics, team collections, compilations, and proceedings issues as well. The, the collections are often overseen, as we know, by um, and edited by guest editors um, who either are solicited or they propose and volunteer to edit a collection of articles on a topical subject area. And um, hence why we decided on this term that called guest edited collections for this particular documentation. I'll bring up for discussion um, in a few minutes what you all think is specifically the problem with these types of collections. From our side, um, the council collectively agreed that there are some specific risks in terms of unethical behavior that journals and publishers should be aware of with regards to these kinds of projects. Um, we believe that guest editors really need to have clear terms and guidance on their role and what it entails, including you know, that in principle, all the quality and ethical standards um, and policies of the journal apply to the collection they are editing. So they need to be aware of these and of the ethos of the journal as well. In terms of responsibility, it's usually a bit of a sticky subject, um, but we want to emphasize that the editors in chief are responsible for guest edited content in their journal, the same as for any other publication um, that happens in their journal as well. From some of the data uh, coming through exchanges between various publishers in the background, there does appear to be some broad and complex unethical behaviors that are seen in clusters in guest edited collections. So we've seen these um, represented in bulk retractions these last couple of years. We're talking about, for example, um, citation cartels, undisclosed competing interests, identity theft, and various types of other peer review manipulation and fraud. Um, as a general recommendation, we think in cases like this, peer review and publications should be suspended by journals for the, all the contents in a particular collection if there are ongoing investigations into unethical pra uh, practices in that collection. 
that would prevent propagating the issue and maybe publishing more articles that might need to be retracted down the road. So we provide a lot more details on the various complex unethical behaviors that we tend to see in guest edited collections in that document. There's also a pretty thorough list of best practices for journals and publishers um, when first setting up such collections in, in the journals, and mainly also how to maintain publication ethics standards um, that in these ongoing projects over time with quality maintenance and different kinds of audits that can be done. So today I would want together to go back to basics a little, to dig further into the roots of the problem we, we've compiled these best practices based on our experience and expertise from you know, council members. But again, um, I'd like to hear from you at this point. So we developed, as I mentioned, a few trick questions to trigger exchanges. Um, I think there are already some questions coming up in the chat. And as I said, you can then start from here to raise your hand. And I have my colleagues who will tell me who to call upon uh, in order. And you can really share your thoughts, your experience, your impressions on guest edited collections. So these are the few questions that we prepared and posted on the website ahead of this um, discussion. I'll take them in pairs. I'll, I'll read them out loud and then really open the floor um, for people to raise their hands. We'll spend probably 10, 15 minutes on each of these couple of questions um, and segue into the other part afterwards. 